Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome to Tuesday uh, morning. It is the 20th of June in South Africa, and it is a very cold, freezing day. I've never experienced such winter. I don't know how you guys are coping, but we are going to pray today. Amen. So today, the theme for today is help for the helpless. Help for the helpless. Hallelujah. I'm going to be teaching on the challenges of being helpless so that we know how to identify them. My objectives today are identifying God as our helper first and foremost. And secondly, to understand that help is on the way, right? Help is on the way. You should always know and have the encouragement that help is always on the way. Amen, somebody. So help is always on the way. Uh, what did I do now? Um, sorry, I uh, pressed something <laughs> erroneously there. Help is always on the way. Help is, is, is from above. So you need to understand where your help comes from, right? Um, yes, the other day I taught that when help is to come from God, God uses human beings on earth. God uses human beings on earth. So we need to understand, however, that he is the source of all help. God is the source of all help. And we're going to look at the challenges of a helpless man. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, everybody in the comment section, you can start typing help for the helpless so that anybody who's coming in understands exactly where we are. Help for the helpless. Okay. There's an interesting scripture in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, that we're going to look at um, in the course of um, our praying this morning. Uh, but today, I also want to touch on Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 in specifically, um, and verse 8, because it gives us a template on how to pray, okay? Um, it's good to know how to pray so that we have the results that we desire. So, if you are the kind of person or you are also one of the people who has ever felt helpless or you are currently feeling helpless and, um, you know, you are in that position where I've always said, whenever you need help from God, don't be shy to cry out to God. Don't be shy to lift up your hand and say, I need help, right? So I want to talk to those people who are saying, you know what? I feel helpless, Pastor Fortune. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, God does not exist. God does exist and God is your helper. Um, he is the helper of the helpless. If you go through scriptures, uh, as we are going to go through today, you will see that he is a helper of the helpless, right? Um, People have forgotten the counsel of asking. You know, the template in Matthew chapter 7 says, ask and it shall be given to you. It introduces you to three levels of prayer. The asking part, right? And the second part, he says, seek and you shall find. So they, they, they are seeking prayers. They are asking prayers. And it also talks about knocking and knock. And it says, it shall be open unto you. Now it shows you that there's somebody who's holding the keys to the door. There's a door that you want to enter. And the, that, that door is somebody's on the other side waiting to unlock that door. It could even be the devil waiting to open that door. So you need to know which doors are you knocking on, right? Some people give up too quickly because they don't want to keep knocking. Talk to me, somebody. Some people don't seek because they keep, they seek and then they, they, they wear out and then they just give up along the way. They don't want to find, right? They want to find, but they are too tired to seek. They are too lazy to seek. Some people don't want to ask. That is why it, it's always puzzling for me when you are with, when you're in a fellowship or a gathering of saints and you are saying ask and they don't ask right? Um, and, and they just keep quiet. And, and somebody who will say, um, but I'm just, you know, quiet. Or, or for example, let me give an example of, if you say somebody lift up your hands, right? Lift up your hands and worship to God. And you find some people who will be folding their hands and just looking at you. So you are doing yourself a disservice because God may be sending your help at that moment. Some people wait too long during a service. They wait until the pastor comes on the podium while their help was actually coming during praise and worship. Am I communicating to somebody? God could be communicating to, during praise and worship when he says, lift up your hands, worship me. The praise and worship leader says to you, this is time to worship God. Lift up your hands and you don't want to lift up your hands. The scripture says when you lift up your hands, it sends like an incense. It's like an incense going up to heaven. So our prayers translate to an incense going to God. God already knows your needs. God already knows what you're praying about. Talk to me, somebody. God is already knowing what you want to talk about and what you have need of. But he asks you, he just says, come and exalt me. I inhabit the praises of my people. I reside in the praises and the worship of my people. I want you to worship me. 
I'm a God who sees. That is why I call you to a, your, your private room and say, come close, shut the door and come into your prayer closet and come and pray to me. Shut the door so that you don't have any distractions, so that you can you can channel what pattern of prayer you are going for. Are you going for asking? Are you here to seek? Are you here to knock? All right? So we need to understand the, the kind of way we need to approach God, right? But we need to approach him with that, that foundation that I'm bringing this morning to say, your help comes from God. There is a foundation that says your help comes from God and he works through men. And that is why we need those men who and, and women who God has positioned to help us to step up and do what is needed. The psalmist says in Psalms uh, 121 verse 1 to 2, he says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So he's the creator of everything. He's in charge of everything. Help me tell those who have just joined us is help for the helpless today. We're talking about help for the helpless. So he says, I will lift up my eyes from where comes my help. My help comes from the hills. Amen, somebody. My help comes from the hills. Hallelujah. It comes from above. I'm, I'm sure of the location of where it's coming from. I'm sure of the doors that I need to knock on. Talk to me, somebody. Amen, somebody. Fortunate online, you're going to have to help me uh, so that I, I know that you are keeping up with me. I am getting some errors, so I need to make sure that uh, we are, we are all, all good. Hallelujah. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He's the creator of everything. So if you are a child of God and you have received the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the hills that he's talking about in that scripture are no longer restricted to your church. The hills that he's talking about can also be in your house. You can just lift up your voice. You can look above. You can shut yourself in your room, in your closet, and decide that you're going to pray to God. And God is going to hear you. As long as you worship him in spirit and in truth, you can call upon him anywhere at any time. You need to understand that God has given you the license to call upon him anywhere at any time. You don't have to be restricted. You don't have to wait for a Sunday. Talk to me. Hallelujah. But sometimes we set our, our minds on, on, on a particular person. We're thinking that if we focus on a particular person or a particular place, even after asking God for help, uh, because we are so sure that God will use them in, as an answer to our prayers. And sometimes we miss it because we think our destiny helper is somebody else. Meanwhile, it is actually somebody else. So help from men, we need to understand that whenever we pray for destiny helpers, help that comes from our destiny helpers is, is only useful if it is orchestrated by God. Because if it comes from a human being directly only, it may last for a short period, but if it comes from God, it is eternal. There is no regret. He adds no sorrow to it. The help and the blessings that come that are orchestrated by God, they add no sorrow. It is inspired by God through men, and it provides a lasting solution, and it provides eternal joy. Am I communicating? Hallelujah. Your help comes from God. It doesn't come with regret. It doesn't come with sorrow. The blessings he brings doesn't come with a, 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 a blackmail note that somebody is going to try and cash up on one day. Talk to me. So we need to acknowledge God. We don't ag acknowledge the creatures that he uses. Hallelujah. The, uh, the God we acknowledge, we acknowledge God as our source of help, but we understand that he works through other human beings and he can work through other creatures. Hallelujah. But they are not the source of help. They are just a vessel. They are a tool. We need to now lift up our eyes unto him with faith, with great expectation. Talk to me, somebody. We lift up our eyes with faith, with a hope, with great expectation, with desire and the confidence that we know that our prayers are going to be answered. I want to guarantee to somebody that as you have risen this morning, your hope will not be deferred any longer. Hallelujah. Your hope will not be deferred. God bless you, Anna. You will not be disappointed. I want you to encourage your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you will not be disappointed. You will not be discouraged. You will not be disappoint disappointed. Amen. So if you need help this morning, I want to encourage you and tell you that help is available. Help is available and your help is from Christ. Hallelujah. If you need favor, if you need mercy, God's favor and mercy are available and they're available in Christ, in the anointed one. You can have anything that you want from God that Jesus died to legally secure for you. You can have anything. Jesus died to secure certain things like your, 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 your security. 
your protection, your, your, your walking in divine health, your prosperity. It's guaranteed in God. You can have anything. Jesus died for it. You are legally entitled to it. Amen. Tell your neighbor once more time that it, this is the help for the helpless. Hallelujah. Help for the helpless. And the, the, the scripture says help is available in Zion. It's time that you call on, on it. Hallelujah. There is a time that is appointed for those who are in Zion to receive that the help that they need. And that is the time that they open up their mouth and they decide to cry unto the Lord. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So there is a time of need. He knows that there is a time of need. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain favor and help in the time of need. We can obtain the grace, the favor to help us, the favor that we require. We need favor in our lives to help us in the time of our need because there is a time and a need for every type of favor, for every type of situation we go through in life. Keep, please keep, ta keep tapping Mara official. Let's make sure we are we're depopulating hell and we're populating heaven. Hallelujah. There is help for the helpless. Hallelujah. So what are the challenges of the helpless men that we need to talk about? Open your scriptures to John chapter five, verse uh, seven. Um, I'm going to start from verse seven in terms of teaching, but there's something that I want to uh, just outline on John chapter five at the beginning. The book of John chapter five. John chapter five. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Which translation will I go for? Thank you, Jesus. The book of John chapter five. Tell somebody we're going to John chapter five now. Hallelujah. 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 He says, after this, verse one, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Now there is a, a, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay great, a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Let me go back to verse one. Then I'm going to go back and jump to verse seven. Verse one says, after this, right? After this, now the question that you need to ask as a prayerful Christian, as a Christian who is a student of the word, you need to ask yourself, what is the this that it is talking about? Is it the this that the mountain that has been trying to fight you? After this, that thing that has been blocking you? After this, this thing that has been an issue, your financial turmoil? After this issue of, of joblessness? So there is a this that you are now focusing your mind on. Sorry, I'm mixing this up with a, a bit of teaching you on how to pray, right? And how to pray through the scriptures. After this, you're asking God for revelation, right? You are a student of the word and you're asking yourself, God is giving us the scripture this morning. He has given us as a template this morning that we're going to pray through John chapter 5. So we need to understand what was happening in John chapter five after this. So there's an after that is the first point of your confidence where you are now launching out and saying there is an after what I can be assured of this too shall pass. There is an after, after going through all this, after the divorce, there is an after, after the, 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 the rejection, there is an after, after the illness, there is an after. That this is whatever you're going through, whatever is an obstacle, whatever is the issue that you are dealing with. I want you to tell yourself that there is an after. There is a moment when that thing ends. There is an expiry period. There is an expiry time frame. Every problem has an expiry date. Nothing is permanent. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Mom Sophie. After this. So you identify what is the this. I'm tying this up to what I taught yesterday. You need to know what you're fighting. You need to know what is the mountain that is you are struggling with. What is the issue? What is the this? If you don't know your problem, you don't know what tools to bring to the fight. You don't know what 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 armament to cut to bring to the fight. This, what is the this? And what is the scripture for the this? What is the promise that God has given you for the this? What is the prophetic word for the hardship that God has given you? And, and, and now you now start being confident. Now you, you are now, you, you are now starting to knock with confidence and say, there is an after 
This too shall pass. You can mock me now, but there is an after. There is a point where I arise and shine. There is a point where I rise from this thing and I dust myself off. There is a point that I move up from, from the helplessness that I felt. There is a point that I no longer have to beg. There is a lo the point that you no longer have to carry me along. And he says there was a feast of the Jews. So there is a feast. He says there is a feast. That means that there is a point where you are now going to celebrate. A feast is a celebration. A feast is a party. There is a, there is a feast that you're going to enjoy. You're going to celebrate. That is why he says, I'm going to prepare a table in the midst of your enemies so that you can have your party openly. You can have your celebration openly. And he says, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. When he says he went up to Jerusalem, look at those two words that say he went up. So that is why I say, when you look up, you look up, you go up. When, when at the level where you are at, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm not losing anybody in this teaching today. You're tracking with me, right? There is a level when you are feeling defeated. There is a level when you are feeling confused. There is a level when that this is trying to, but when, when this level tries to suffocate you, when this level where you are at tries to drown you, when this level where you are at is trying to confuse you, you look up, you go up to Jerusalem, you go up to the Holy city. Are, are we tracking together? We go up. We go up, right? He says he went up. Now there is in Jerusalem. He tells you in Jerusalem, there is what? There is a ship gate by the ship gate. He's going by the ship gate, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great, now the, the, by the, by in Jerusalem, there is the, by the ship gate, there is a pool. Hallelujah. Now you now focus on the fact that you need to locate your pool. There is a pool with a solution. There is a pool that you have heard about. But at this pool, there's all sorts of people. In church, if you think about it and, 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 and take the analogy of saying that there, there, there is by the sheep gate a church called Bethesda. There is a, 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 the pool is in, in this illustration is your, is your church, the body of Christ. There are people who are different from different backgrounds, from different types of needs. They bring different types of needs. They are struggling from different types of issues. He says by the pool, there are different times. There's a multitude of different people. There are people who are sick and that represents also the body of Christ. Not only people who are in the world. He says there are those who are blind, no matter how much they come to church, some of them every single day, but, and you are preaching and you are preaching inside. You are giving revelation, but they still choose to remain blind. There are those who choose to remain sick. Hallelujah. Somebody, there are those who are lame. That means those who are, are paralyzed. He says they are, they are lame. That when you are lame, that means your legs are not functioning. You cannot move. You have to be carried. Your friends have to carry you so that you, they bring you closer to your miracle. He says they are paralyzed. They are waiting for the moving of the water. They are paralyzed. They don't, they, they are confused. They don't know that there's a God who is a God of help. There's, there's help that is on the way. They don't understand that there's an anointing that carries with it help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are waiting. They're saying, they're, they're sitting there. I'm waiting for somebody to help me. But the word keeps coming and the word keeps coming, but they don't hear it. Then they don't do it or they hear it and they don't do it. Now let's skip to chapter um, verse seven of that same scripture. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say help for the helpless. Hallelujah. Now, when, when, when you see, when you get to verse seven, you begin to understand the first problem that you have when you, when you feel helpless. Anybody who's in a helpless state is feeling number one, abandoned. They feel alone. They feel dependent like the men at the pool of Bethesda. Verse 7, he says, the sick man answered, sir, I don't have anyone to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. Some people's excuses, I don't have money to go to church, but I have money for McDonald's. I don't have time to pray, but I want the help. Am I communicating with somebody? Oh, help me, Jesus. Talk to me, help for the helpless, help for the helpless. We have every excuse. The people, the multitude of people who are sitting by the pool, by that one pool called Bethesda, who are having every single excuse why they cannot do what they need to do. Meanwhile, the word of God says, I am the helper of the helpless. If you come boldly to my throne, I will release the grace that will help you in the time of need.
But if you have the time to unlock the keys that will unlock that grace, then you will see it functioning in your life. But if you're going to choose to sit by the pool, if you're going to choose to sit by the roadside and not have the boldness of blind Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus said, enough is enough. I am going to make sure that I raise my voice and I'm going to make sure I shout and say, Jesus, oh, son of David, have mercy on me. I'm not going to let you pass by. I might be blind physically, but I've got the insight to know when my miracle is walking past me and when my miracle is walking past me. I don't care how much of the crowd is in there. I don't care who I have to press through. When it's time for me to touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to push through and I'm going to press through. Am I communicating to somebody this morning? I'm going to push through because it's time for my help. Blind Bartimaeus said, no, 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 no. I'm going to shout. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to raise my voice. I'm going to cry. The more they tried to shush him, the more they tried to shut him up, the more he just decided I'm going to escalate this issue. You're not going to back me off. I'm not going to be by the roadside anymore. I'm not going to be a beggar anymore. I'm not going to sit by the poolside anymore. Jesus, still, still, help, still, still help this man. I don't have the way. I am waiting for people to pick me up. I'm waiting for people to give me the money to do what I need to do. The devil is a liar. With or without money, come and buy. Jesus. He says that Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? He says, so I, I don't, I don't have anyone to put me in the water when the water is stirred up. How often this man was sitting by the pool of Bethesda. They say that for 38 years, this was not a 38 year old man. It was saying he was sitting there for 38 years. So for all we know, he could have been 50 years or 40 years or 60 years, but 38 years of this man's life, he's sitting there and lay man by the pool. He's not moving. How many people are in their 30 year, 38 years experience? I don't know what to do. I come from a poor family. I stay in a poor house. I, I, I just don't know where what will ever happen to my life. What, what if you took the step of faith and did the, 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 the thing that is not uh, 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 conceivable? Oh, are we checking together? Oh, Jesus. 38 years, Mom Sophie. 38 years. He was sitting there. Oh, my father, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, from now on, my, by your help, oh God, I decree and I declare that everybody who's at the sound of my voice, uh, we will no longer feel abandoned in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and I declare that everybody who's at the sound of my voice, uh, they will know and have the confidence of knowing that they do not walk alone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I wish you could shout that amen and stand in agreement. In any area or in any way that we have becoming, a, we have become a laughing stock. In any way you have become helpless. May the Lord reverse your status this morning. May the Lord reverse your status this morning. Oh, Jesus. I'm already releasing prophetically. If you are not going to grab it and run with it now. Shakadi abasokotaka. Somebody declared in the comment section, I will no longer be helpless. I cannot be helpless. I will no longer be helpless. Hallelujah. May the Lord help you. May the Lord restore speedily the years that you lost. Whatever you missed in the past years due to loneliness, may it be restored speedily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord release the right company that you need to come into association with. May the Lord connect you to the right people who are going to be the right network that will unlock the right projects and the right contracts, the right emails, the right calls that you need to get in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive help now. The Lord is sending you the right company, the right associations, the right people. Oh, what is the challenge of the, hel of, of the helpless, Pastor Fortune? They are always in need and they, come, they tend to come last. They come last minute, last time. They are always in need. John chapter 5 verse 4, the Bible says, For an angel went down at a certain time. There is a certain time that this angel was strategically going to be there. And, and he was going to come and trouble the water. Then whoever first stepped into the water after the troubling of the water was made whole of whatever disease he had. 
So this guy is never able to meet up with the appointment because there's a certain time, there's a set time, there's an appointed time where your miracle is supposed to happen. But because somebody chose to, to hit the snooze button and say, I'm not waking up for prayer this morning. I'm not going to wake up and do my devotional with God. I'm not going to go to church. I'm too tired. I'm too exhausted. Then get ready for 38 years if you're too exhausted. I'm talking to those who are saying, I'm ready to fight. I'm not too exhausted to fight for my destiny. I'm not too exhausted to change things in my life. He says in verse seven, he says, while I'm trying to get in, what, what, trying, at least try, try. Let me see you try. Let's see you by your actions that you're trying. While I'm trying, not while I'm delegating. Not while I'm delegating my destiny, not while I'm delegating my prayers, not while I'm delegating worshiping God, not while I'm delegating sacrificing, not while I'm delegating sacrificing the money that I need to go and be within the fellowship of the brethren. I, the Bible says that do not abandon the fellowship of the brethren. Yes, I'm going there. I'm going to rebuke some, 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 some Christians here. You have money to do your hair. You have money to do your nails, but you don't have money to go to church. You have money to buy drinks with your friends, but you don't have money to go fellowship with other believers. You don't have money to do for God. Let me leave it right there. You can ponder on that. Love me or not, I love you anyway. Because those are the people that often say, I'm trying. And God is putting you to the test to see in the little that I give you, are you going to even try better? There are people that are prayed for that will receive their jobs, that they will not even think about tithing or even giving to the Lord. You give in that small that even if the salary is not enough to meet up with all the needs, you give to say thank you. Otherwise, the rest of the 90% shall be taken. If you are going to ignore the principles of God, you are going to have to pay for it in one way or the other. Your child may get sick. Your 10% is still going. Let me tell you the truth. It's still going to go whether you give it or not. And God tests you because some people are saying, I'm praying for a hundred thousand salary. Don't, don't even go. Don't, don't even leave the broadcast now. Stay here. We need help. Hallelujah. Be trusted with the small Sophie. So that when he gives you much, what are you going to do with a, a 1 million rand salary if you cannot be trusted with a 100,000 salary? Let me continue. Hallelujah. He was coming last. This guy was coming last at the pool all the time. So this morning, you need to determine and pray and say this curse of coming last must be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the curse of persistent denial. I terminate it in the name of Jesus Christ. Any denial that every time when you are being denied, any time you are being rejected and denied, right now it is being terminated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will no longer come last. You must make up your mind. I break the curse of coming last. People who are helpless are people who've got a curse of coming last. You arrived late. Your application came late. Da -da 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 -da, late. Everything is late. Oh, Jesus. I break the curse of failed efforts in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Kalabaya Sotokodia. Yes, my dear lady. Oh, we break the curse of coming last in the name of Jesus Christ. We break the curse of denial. We persistent denial. We break it. Every failed effort, every year when I it's failed efforts, every, no, we break it in the name of Jesus. It must stop. I want you to stop those failed efforts. You say it stops today. No more. No more. The curse of running. You are running. The curse of huffing and puffing to nowhere. You are fast moving to nowhere. You are just moving. You are a busy body, but there's no productivity. There's nothing being produced. This year, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everyone who's at the sound of my voice, I decree and I declare that the curse of running, huffing and puffing to nowhere, it expires right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You will have productivity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The curse of poverty, the curse of lack, it expires right now. The curse of poverty is broken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. People who are helpless, number three, they are stagnant and they are stranded. I want you to pray against stagnancy and strandedness. I will not be stranded. I will not be stagnant. I will not be staying in one place and not moving around. I will not be relying on people to just to carry me and put me in one place the whole time. How can I be in the same place for 38 years?
How can I be in an abusive relationship for 38 years? Your 38 years might be your two years or your two months and you can see the red flags, but you are sitting there for the sake of sitting there because you are in love of the idea of being married and you can see that you are with a dinosaur, a, a monster who's going to kill you one day or kill your children. You are in, the, in, in, in a relationship, in association with a woman that, you, that is a strange woman that has broken your home and you are choosing to stay there. Stay there. Let's see what happens. Oh, Jesus. Makoda maya satakadia. You, 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 you should fight stagnancy because some of the helplessness, the curses of helplessness, we bring it on by sabotaging ourselves. Oh, you shall not be stagnant. I decree and I declare that you will not be stranded in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. When men are helpless, they are stranded and stagnant. They remain on the same spot. A man was there who had been sick for 38 years. What is the sickness for 38 years that you have been struggling with? What is your issue? What is your this that we need to tr we need to deal with your this so that we can come to your after so that we can now start planning your celebration. Oh, you will not be stranded. My father, my father, with everybody that is at the sound of my voice, who's got the guts to pray for their destiny. Father, we ask you right now, help us restore the years that have been stolen from us. Oh my God, restore the years that we have lost. Father, we ask that you restore the seasons that we have lost. In the name of Jesus Christ, restore the opportunities that we have lost. Restore our age. In the name of Jesus Christ, fill it with meaning. Let my age be filled with meaning. Let me leave a legacy that that is meaningful. Let people that are following me, my children, that, that, that will inherit something. Let me leave something, a beneficial inheritance for my children that they can see that I came on in this world. I did not come just to obtain a birth certificate and a, a, a death certificate. Oh my God, help restore us, oh God. For every day of failure that you had in the year of 2022, this year, your helper will have come through and restore you in Jesus' mighty name. For every day of failure that you have felt from January until June now, as we transition into the month of July, as we transition into the second part of the year, your help is coming and your help is on the way. Your help has arrived. Your progress is going to be restored for the rest of the year. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare that the second part of your year will not be the same like your first part of 2023. It will be sweeter and it will be better in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Oh my God. I refuse to be like the cripple at the gate called beautiful. Oh my God. Acts chapter three, verse two says the at the beautiful gate, as it was called, there was a gate called beautiful as it was called. A man was who had been lame all his life. This one was all his life. That means from birth every day he was carried to the gate so that he can go and ask for alms. He can go ask for money from people who are going up and down. Imagine sitting like an ornament at the gate called beautiful, but your life is not beautiful. Nothing about your finances is beautiful. Nothing about your family is beautiful. But you are put there every single day of your life. You are sitting at the gate called beautiful. Do you not understand? Let me talk to the guys. Do you understand that your parents, even if you come from a poor background, they are waiting for you to change the destiny of the family. They are waiting for you to step up to make sure that they experience the gate called beautiful that their lives also become beautiful? Do you understand that you do not have the, 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 the time to waste, to, 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 to just let your life go to waste? Do you understand that you don't have the luxury to become lazy, to become, to become a procrastinator? Do you understand that you have to fight? Do you understand that you have the responsibility to make sure that your children don't have the same testimony that, you, that they will also say, I am poor? No, 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 no. You don't have that luxury. You don't have that luxury. You're going to have to account. You're going to have to account to God because sometimes God is looking. God says, when you come to me and you come in prayer, I'm looking. I'm not here to hear. He says, I already know your needs. I'm looking. I see. Matthew 7, 8, he says, he who see, he sees, he sees what you do when you come to prayer. When you don't come to prayer, he says, he knows your deeds. I know your works. I know your deeds. I know the type of person you are. I know that your motive is sometimes like this. I know that you only come to me when you want this. 
May we repent in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lord, help us. Indeed, restore the years that I lost, oh, God, in Jesus' mighty name. The guy was at the gate called Beautiful. He was lame for all his life. Every day he was relying on people to carry him so that he can go and be a beggar at the gate. I decree and I declare as June turns to July and we shift to the second part of the year, help is coming your way. Help to move you forward is coming your way. I decree and I declare that help to move you forward is coming your way. In this second part of the year, as we transition from June into July, whatever it is that has been unbecoming, whatever has been looking normal, but it has been putting you on the same spot, it is terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. You will receive the ideas that will rule your life. You will receive ideas that will push you forward in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is releasing them now. Those ideas that will recreate the world, those ideas that will change your world and push you forward and move your life forward and move the life of your family forward. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. People who are helpless are people who are, who are in a dirty and a stinking position. If you think about sitting on the same place for 38 years, for 38 years, you are sitting in the same position. When do you get time to bath? Who bathes you? You are relying on other people. They, are the, they have to carry, they have to do all sorts of things. He was paralyzed. Verse 3 says, in this lay a multitude of invalids. They were invalid. That means they were useless people. People who were regarded invalid, they were useless. They were blind, they were lame and paralyzed. None of these people can bath themselves. None of, the, of these people understand that there is the blood of Jesus that can speak for them. None of these people understood that there is the blood that can wash them and they can be white no, none of these people understood that there was the blood of Jesus that can heal their diseases and that can chase away any Egyptian that has been chasing them. They did not have an understanding. They were dirty and in a stinking position. They were in the same waters. Nothing was moving. If it has to move, you're going to have to move your faith. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You're going to have to move. You're going to have to move. My father, my father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as I pray, in every association of the dirty, the unclean, that either ourselves or our family members have been registered. Lord, we cancel it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and we declare we will not be in a dirty and stinking position. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare that the debt and the smell of a helpless person shall not come to you. It will expire in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has been, do you understand? Let, 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 me, let me give you this illustration. When people are approached by a hobo and they are dressed to the nines, you are dressed very well. You don't even want the hobo to touch you because you feel they are smelling, right? You don't want them to even talk to you. Some people don't even have the guts to hug a hobo. So you, it gives you the understanding that people who are in that helpless position, are the, people just, they repel. There are some people who don't understand why the thing that they are looking for is busy running away from them. Oh, I'm going into a spiritual dimension now. There are people who, I'm trying to think of an English word of describing what I want to describe. It, it is a, it is, it's a satanic manipulation. When you hear, those of you who are in South Africa, you will help me. I don't know what is, is trito, is trito in English, but I'm going to try and explain this so that everybody gets it. In South Africa, especially in the African circles, there is something called istrito. When, when this spell, it's a spell, yes, let, let me call it a spell. When this has been done on you, right, by witches, you repel anything that is favorable that you want. I hope you, you get it. Morning, Respa, welcome. So, yes, it's a curse. It's a curse that has been placed on you that makes what you want move away from you. When you come closer to that thing, it's like there's a smell that repels and it, it, the person draws away from you. And normally this curse is performed on, on, on people who are married, on, on partners, or, uh, or the curse might be placed on, on somebody who 
in a workplace scenario. So if, if they don't want you to find favor with your boss and they want you to lose your job, right? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Right? Yes. It is the curse that drives away your blessings. Thank you, mom. Sophie. thank you for helping me find the English words. It is a curse that drives away your blessings, right? Whatever scenario it may be, there is something. And that curse specifically is associated with a smell, a bad smell. And that bad smell, people will not understand. They will say, I'm a child of God. I'm praying. And, 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 and people will say, but there's something. I keep on getting into a relationship. My relationship does not even last for a week. My, 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 my association that like I come, I'm always at the near a point of breakthrough. It's like I, when I have to sign the contract, suddenly the, the, my business partners pull out. Are we tracking together somebody? Right? So <laughs> Snake, it's, I'm telling you, we need to know what is the, this that you are fighting. So when you are seeing things just escape like that, you begin to understand that you are fighting a evil power now. There are spirits that are work at work. What is that smell? You need to ask, what is that smell? What is that smell that I'm fighting? What is that smell that is making me always just miss my point of breakthrough? My God, my father, as we pray this morning, Holy Spirit, clean us up, wash us clean. We want to enter the second part of the year clean. God, no curse. We decree and we declare that no curse shall work upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against, we destroy, we expire it, we de obliterate it. Any form of curse or spell that will, well, or spell or curse against our blessing, against the manifestation of our blessings, we come against it right now. It catches fire right now. We remove it, we decree and we declare that we are clean from it in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall not affect us. We, 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 we obliterate it from marriages, oh God. Any curse that is, is being put by any strange woman or any strange man or oh God that is, is, is assigned to break up marriages, any curse that has been assigned to, 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 to make us not get the jobs that we want, in Jesus' mighty name, Holy Spirit, clean us up. As the Lord lives, I decree and I declare that there will be no stink in your life in Jesus' mighty name. And if there was a stink, you will stink no more in the name of Jesus. Ah, what are the challenges of a, a, a helpless man? A helpless man is a man who is crying and begging. He's always crying and begging. May the Lord wipe your tears. I want you to declare it right now in the comment section it says, I will not cry and beg anymore. I will not cry. I will not beg anymore. If you are to cry, you're going to cry to God because he says, lift up your heels from whence hand comes your help. And you cry. If you want to cry like blind Bartimaeus, you cry to God. But you're no longer going to cry out of pity parties. You're not going to cry and sit there in for 38 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Helpless people have no choice. Helpless people are the ones who are always begging, being carried to the gate called beautiful. You're waiting for somebody to help you carry you and carry you to a place where you're going to go beg. Hallelujah. Father, my father, help us to beg no more. I decree and I declare that the spirit of begging, the spirit of crying, it will leave us alone in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not entering into the second part of the year with the spirit of begging and the spirit of crying in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree that going forward, help of the helpless is coming my way. I receive the help of God. My life will be beautiful. Declare it with me. Your life will be beautiful. My life will be beautiful. As the Lord lives, fortune will beg no more. As the Lord lives, Lesicho will beg no more. How am I doing for time? 10 minutes to go. Let me, let me wrap up. You are receiving help. God, deliver me from the gates of begging. Let me not be found from the gates of begging. You will not be found in the gates of begging in Jesus' mighty name. Mom Jester, you will not be found in the gates of begging. Nyoa, you will not be found in the gates of begging. I decree it, my Siho, do not be found in the gates of begging. Mom Sophie, you will not be found in the gates of begging in the name of Jesus Christ. Kathy, you will not be found in the gates of begging in the name of Jesus Christ. What is the challenge of a helpless person, Pastor? The helpless person is a useless person. It's an invalid useful for no one, including themselves. May you never be an invalid. I want you to decree and declare that I will never be useless. I will never be useless to myself and to anybody else. I will be useful to others. I will be useful to myself. I will be useful to my family in the name of Jesus Christ. When people are helpless, people start running away from them, as I told you.
Family members, friends, even enemies start keeping them at arm's length. You will never get to that position in the name of Jesus Christ. As you have arisen this morning to decree and declare and to pray along with me in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus, let me not be at arm's length of people that need to help me in the name of Jesus Christ. Let people not run away from me. In particular, God, those that you have sent to favor me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will never be useless. I will never be useless to my family. I will never be useless to myself. I will never be useless in the, my workplace. I will never be useless in anything that God puts my hand to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I will never be that person. The Bible says when they saw him lying and knowing he had spent much time, verse 6, it says they knew that he had been there for a long time. He had spent much time there. Jesus said, do you desire to be made whole? I will not get to the point of uselessness that I don't even know whether I want to be healed anymore or not. People who are helpless, sometimes they get to a point of discouragement and hope has been deferred so much that they don't even know whether they want to be helped. They're thinking that this is the status quo. They're thinking dysfunctionality is now functional and they they're thinking that this is how things are supposed to be. I don't even want to pray about this anymore because it doesn't help. Oh, Jesus, help her to the helpless. Come through for us in this morning in Jesus' mighty name. The question that will make my life useful again. Oh, God, ask me before this year ends. The question that will make my life useful again. Oh, God, Ask me that question today before the day ends. The question that will make my life useful again. Oh God, ask me before this month of June ends. May the Lord ask you the question that will make you useful again. The question that will make you useful again. May it be asked. And when it is asked, may you have the answer that is appropriate in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, my father, my father, as I pray, everybody who's at the sound of my voice, the offer that will make their lives useful again, help of the helpless, ask us before this day ends. The offer you have been waiting for, my God. Let that offer be made in the name of Jesus Christ. Before this June ends, the offer you have been waiting for, let it be offered before this end of June, before the end of 2023. Let that offer be offered in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my father, as I intercede and I stand in the gap for them, my God, the request that will make their lives useful, the request that will make my life useful, helper of the helpless, ask me that question again. Give me that request again in the name of Jesus Christ. The interest that will make my life better, let that interest be sent to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Before today ends, let the interested people begin to show themselves. Let the interest that will be shown that they are interested in my application, they are interested in my appointed, let, me, let it be sent to me in the name of Jesus before the end of June, before the end of this week, before the end of today, let it be sent to me in the name of Jesus. Kaya. A helpless person is a person who cannot see or they can see, but they don't experience it. It's very painful to see something, to see your breakthrough, to see what you need, but you can't experience that thing. Oh, Jesus. You can see that clearly some people are experiencing breakthrough. Some people are experiencing breakthroughs left, right, and center, testifying left, right, and center. Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool, but I'm watching here for 38 years. I'm watching people get into the pool. I'm watching people get their healing. I'm watching people break through their debt crisis. I'm watching people re remove debts from their lives. I'm watching people turn around their lives, but I'm sitting here. Oh my God. As we have risen this morning, ah, Father, I pray that the type of celebrations that we have gone to, that we have celebrated with others, the type of celebrations and the parties that they have invited you to, that you have never had the opportunity to throw themselves, you are going to throw that celebration this year. You will throw that celebration this year. You will experience that celebration in the name of Jesus Christ. No longer shall you see, but you will partake. No longer shall you just see. No longer shall you be an invited, but you will be the chief invitee, inviter. 
You have been an invited, invited too long, but you are going to be the inviter now. Oh my God. Helper of the helpless. Helper of the helpless. Send my celebration so that I can send out invitations in the name of Jesus Christ. The things that you have missed severally that you needed to make abundant progress, helper of the helpless, send those things to me so that I can make abundant progress in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree from now on, not only will you see it, but you will experience it. I said you will experience it. Tag your neighbor and tell them, I will experience it. I will not only see, I will experience it. I will will not only see, I will experience it. What are the challenges of the helpless, my God, that I need to be delivered from? The helpless are abused. They are abused. They can't even stand up for themselves. They can't even talk for themselves. They are harassed. They are cheated. They are abused. They are harassed. They are cheated. People who are helpless People who don't read the fine line, they are cheated of their inheritances. They are helpless. That is why Jesus says, be careful of, of being like a, 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 a child who does not know what your inheritance involves. In If you don't know what is in the will, the tutors, you, if you are under the tutelage of uh, and, and the governor's tutelage, you don't know what is in the will. So they can cheat you. You don't know what your parents have left for you. May you never come to the position where you don't understand what is in the will that has been left for you, where you understand the depth of your inheritance so that you can claim it. Nobody must cheat you out of what God has already given you. Nobody must cheat you out of the promises that God has made for you. Go and identify your this and identify the promise that is located with your this and you manifest it and you go over, you make sure that you get to your feasting season. Tell your neighbor, I will feast. I will feast. I will celebrate. Goliath was fighting the children of Israel. He abused the children of Israel. He harassed the children of Israel. He, he wanted the children of Israel to be cheated. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 8 says, he stood and he shouted. Imagine somebody who's standing, those people who are abusive, who are narcissistic, who are abusive verbally, emotionally, mentally, whatever way, physically abusive. They are sitting there. They are standing and they are shouting. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel. He, he, he has no regard of the ranks of Israel. He says, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? Are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man from yourselves who's going to come and fight me. And if he's able to fight me and win, I'm going to, uh, you, you can, I will be your slave. But if, if I kill him, you're going to be my slave forever. He says, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that will fight me. When Saul and all of Israel heard these words and they, they were dismayed and they were greatly afraid. Thank God there was a man who stood up that morning. Thank God that Sophie and Eunice stood up. Thank God that Bonnie stood up. Thank God that Mom Jester and Snare stood up and said, not on my watch. I'm going to show you that you are an uncircumcised Philistine and you're not going to come and run your mouth like that. You're not going to come and lay curses on me the way you want. I will not be afraid for the Lord has not given me the spirit of fear, but he has given me a spirit of a sound mind. He has made sure that he has given me the tools. He has called me an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. Do you understand that I know who I am? I know my inheritance says I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Do you understand that I understand that the inheritance and the will that I, I, I function from the template and the manuscript that I'm functioning from tells me that no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against, against me in judgment, I will condemn. And therefore I condemn you, you Goliath, whoever you are, I condemn you, whoever you are, you mountain, whoever you are, this, this thing, this thing that you are thinking you are, you are so big. I will never be a slave to you. I understand my inheritance. I understand the manuscript that I work from. Talk to me, somebody. I decree and I declare that as this month of June draws to a close and we switch into the second part of the year, you will not lose any battle. The Lord will fight your battles. I want you to call on the Lord right now and say, God, fight my battles for me in the name of Jesus Christ. As this month draws to a close, you are going to fight my battles for me. I'm entering July as a victor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm entering July knowing that I can trust in God. Hallelujah.
He comes through for help. He will come through to help you because I can trust on him. He says, do not despise the days of humble beginnings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do not despise the cries, the cries of mercy. Do not despise the cry of mercy. If you're going to cry for mercy, open up your mouth right now and say, I cry for your mercy, oh God. He says, call on me. If you call on me sincerely and in mercy, I will come through, through for you in healings, with healing in my wings. I am coming through with healing in my wings. This is scriptural. This is your will. Malachi says he is coming with healing in his wings. Those of you who are believing God for healing this morning, he is coming through with healing on his wings. As you cry out for mercy, as you open up your mouth and determine like blind Bartimaeus that you have the insight to make sure and that you have the revelation to know that there is a rabbi that is standing inside of you and in front of you who is ready to release the word, who is ready to release the word. And when you receive the word, you release, receive every blessing, every miracle that you are believing for in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Connect to God speedily this morning. Begin to cry for mercy. No one who ever comes to the Lord kneeling in worship, asking for help and goes back without an answer. You are going back with your answer in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus, he's a God that answers. He's got the personality of answering. He's a God. He's got the nature of answering. If you come to him with an attitude of worship, understanding that he's God, he's, he's God, he's above all things. Oh my God, I hope you get it. I hope you understand what your worship does. When you lift up your hands, lift up your hands right now and say, I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, mighty God. Oh, are you ready to cry as we close? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, help from above. Help is on the way. Help from above has come. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray and ask, Lord, that you will rend the heavens and come down and help us in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, oh God, we ask, oh God, do not be far from us. In the name of Jesus Christ, make haste, oh God, to send us help, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we have gathered to call upon you, God, deliver us, oh God. My God, we ask that, Lord, everything that we do, oh God, be pleased with our actions, oh God. Come quickly and rescue us in the name of Jesus Christ. Make haste to help us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us fast so that the enemy does not have to ask us who is your God and where is your God. Help us quickly so that the enemy does not come to mock us and, and ask us where is your God. Help us, oh God, of our salvation for the glory of your name, oh God. Let your name be glorified in our lives. Deliver us, our God. Purge us away from our sins, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, for your name's sake. Not for my sake, but for your name's sake. For your name's sake. Oh, let it not be, you will not be asked, where is your God? Let You, you must never come to a position where they're asking, where is your God? Ask the Lord to deliver you right now from imminent shame. Lord, I thank you, God. I decreed and I declare it right now. We are delivered from imminent shame, imminent reproach, imminent disgrace. We will not be disgraced. We will not be shamed. We will not be in reproach. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we call upon you to rescue us right now. We call upon your strength to go out and empower us, God. I decree and I declare right now you are receiving the strength of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let every hand that is weak right now, I, I speak to to the hands that are weak. I speak to the hands that are tired right now, right now, as you lift them up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will be able to hold on. You will not give up in the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you who thought I cannot hold on any longer, Pastor Fortune, I'm here to lift up your hands. I'm here to anchor you up and tell you, you can do it. You can go on. You can move on. Hallelujah. The Lord has come and the Lord has come to save you. The Lord will deliver you. Hallelujah. The Lord will have mercy on you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are being released from the shadow and the clothes of sin. You are being released from the shackles and the clothes of curses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is ordering your steps right now in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall be no iniquity and, and dominion over you in the name of Jesus Christ. No iniquity shall have dominion over you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is delivering you from any mental health issues in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has been tormenting you mentally right now and it, it, you are being released from it. I declare and I declare that you are being delivered 
delivered from anxiety issues in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord to deliver you from any habit that is besetting any sin, anything that has robbed you of the best life in Jesus Christ right now be delivered in Jesus mighty name. Pray and ask the Lord to help you to break free from any mental stronghold, anything that Satan has been using to torment you. I decree and I declare right now you are being released from that thing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that this morning as we have arisen, oh God, that you will frustrate and disappoint the counsel of the wicked against your children in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that we will not bow to satanic pressures in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that we will not bow to any witchcraft manipulation in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that as we have prayed, oh God, as we have asked for your help, oh God, we come with courage, oh God, we come with boldness to stand with you, oh God, in the face of danger, in the face of death, oh God, we shall come out clean and untouched and unscathed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we pray and ask, Lord, send the angels that need to assist us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ against any struggle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus, it devil is a lie. How can we have... Um internet issues we have network issues on mara official the devil is a liar if you have any issues please jump onto fortune l online if you're having any issues we are closing now but you can quickly jump onto fortune l online come and join us on fortune l online if you are seeing any instability otherwise you can still stay there if you can still hear me in the mighty name of jesus christ father let 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 let, let us not be obliv oblivious to the angels that you have sent for us in the mighty name of jesus christ begin to receive right now right now begin to call on the angels to be released who are the angels that need to come for your help that, that angel that has been allo allocated to help you from the struggles that you're going through in jesus mighty name oh the bible says are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation hallelujah there is an angel that has been sent to minister to you in jesus mighty name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. I'm trying to, 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 to look for a charger. To help those of you on Mara official. Hallelujah. Ah, Karabasunda. Father, we ask that the men and women that have power and influence that you have allocated for us, oh God, let them come through now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, receive it now, Sissy, in the name of Jesus Christ. That person that you have been waiting for, that has been allocated to help you in Jesus' mighty name, they are coming your way right now. That person of influence, that person who has the power to make the decision that you need right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus, send the help that we've been waiting for. Lord, we thank you. I ask, Lord, that you open up our eyes to see and recognize the help that we need when it comes through in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Declare that the help of God has come. Declare that the help of God has located you in this morning, in Jesus' mighty name. Let the help of God locate you in every aspect of your life. Let the help of God locate you in every aspect of your life, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the condition of your heart right now, receive the divine help that you have been waiting for, in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are receiving the help that you need. You are receiving the help that you need in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Please jump onto Fortune L online very quickly. Or, or jump onto Facebook or YouTube. Hallelujah. Marco Raba Sotokodia. Those of you who are on Fortune L online, you can stay here. I'm closing. Father, thank you. Just begin to thank him right now. Thank him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I declare and I decree that you will not miss it. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. The help of the helpless has come through for you this morning. You will not miss it. Hallelujah. You will not miss it and you will not miss out. You will not miss out on your blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we call upon heaven to attend to our needs right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, your word has declared in the book of Psalms that call on the day on the Lord in the day of trouble. We call on the Lord today, Father God. Whatever trouble somebody is going through right now, Lord, we call on your name. We call on you on this day of trouble, O oh God. The name of God, of, of the God of Jacob will defend us in the name of Jesus. Send help from the sanctuary. Strengthen us in Zion. Remember all our offerings. Remember our burnt sacrifices. Grant us all that we need according to, to your own heart, O oh God. 
Anything that we need, you know our needs, granted to us, O oh God, according to what we need in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you, O oh God. Fulfill all of these things according to your counsel, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and I declare that everybody who's at the sound of my voice shall be at the right place and at the right time. They will not miss a season of divine visitation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you this morning as we go our separate ways that your life will begin to move forward. You will begin to make progress in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By the mercies of God, your life will make progress. You can go ahead and begin to thank God for answered prayers now in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Thank you for these ones that have joined. I pray for every single person that is on Facebook and on YouTube. I pray for those who are on Mara Official. I pray for those who are on Fortunell Online. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that our helpers of destinies have been released in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that every helper of destiny, wherever they are located, they will arise and locate us. Send us help, O oh God, from your sanctuary in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that every divine helper from the four corners of the earth is hearing the word of the Lord right now. They will hear the word of the Lord. They will locate you by fire. They are locating you by fire right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Decree it. Call on your helpers. Begin to thank God for your destiny helpers that have located you. They are locating you by fire right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for healing Mom Sophie in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for empowering celebration in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Every evil word that has been spoken in your in your vicinity, about you, concerning you, concerning your family, concerning your business, concerning your career. Every evil word I commanded to backfire to the people that spoke it. Every error, any evil word that has been spoken against your destiny, I commanded to backfire right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The salt of your life shall not become sand. You will have flavor and your life shall reflect favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, every power that has been magnetizing you to the pattern of being backward or stagnant, we bury it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I bury it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Any man or woman that has been born, that has been speaking evil words, incantations, utterances that are against my destiny, against the destiny of anyone who's at the sound of my voice right now, let the thunder of God Tear them to pieces right now in Jesus' mighty name. I speak against any woman or any man, any creature, whatever it is, that has been speaking against your destiny. Right now, the thunder of God will tear them to pieces in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any person that has been sitting on an evil mat, praying against your destiny, praying against your moving forward, praying against your legs and saying you will be lame, you will be rendered useless. Ah! Let the thunder of God strike them today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for answered prayers. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for honoring this meeting in Jesus' mighty name. Glory be to the living God in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for everybody. Thank you, Snare. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. Who did I see? Let me just read a few names on Facebook. Um, Chido, God bless you. Snare, God bless you. Vimbai, God bless you. Uh, Nyoa, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Mam Jester, God bless you. Noashe, God bless you. Hallelujah. Everybody, I can't read everybody's name, but I want to tell you that you are blessed and you have received help from above. Helper of the helpless has come through for you in Jesus' mighty name. We meet again tonight at 10 p.m. for Apostle Mara's session. Um, God bless you and make sure you don't miss it and don't miss tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Those of you who are in the Johannesburg region, Please remember our crusade in um, four ways. Uh, please make sure you are following the host account that you have been watching from. Don't leave without following the host account. And if you have, um, there's a link on YouTube for YouTube on the profiles, especially on TikTok. You can go to YouTube, rewatch the replays, and you can click the like button on, 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 on YouTube as well. There's a lot that you can catch up on so that you can flow together with us. So please give us a follow uh, and turn on the notification bell. So I just want to remind everybody on Facebook and on YouTube, make sure that you are spreading the posters and let's have fun in the Lord. It will be just two hours uh, of the crusade that we are doing in, um, 
in four ways uh, in Johannesburg. So 30th of June, it's a date. Okay. God bless you guys. I love you so much. Have a beautiful day.